If you ever watch my first episode on Namibia, I stated vividly that Namibia is Africa's most underrated country. You know why I said that? Because Namibia is not what I expected. The untapped natural beauty The cleanliness of the cities of Namibia. Not just the cities, but the towns and villages. I must confess that I traveled the entire Namibia and one of the places that really shocked me and I believe that you are also gonna be shocked is the coast of Namibia. Brothers and sisters, I want to say welcome to the coast of Namibia. Unforgettable desert experience here in Namibia. I simply don't understand why Africans have to go all the way to Dubai just to have such an experience of which you can enjoy it here on the continent. I mean, leave a comment and let me know is it because the tourism board of Namibia is not marketing the country that much, or is it because Africans don't value what they have on their own continent? But if it's the first one, then I guess the Namibian tourism board to employ us and I believe that we can do a great job. Leave a comment and let me know if you agree with me. Did I convince you to visit Namibia now? Oh no, God! No? Come on, what else do I need to tell you to convince you that Namibia is a perfect tourist destination? Welcome to the most beautiful part of Namibia, the coast where the Ocean meets the dunes. This is a sandwich harbor. Uh, right here we get the sandwich harbor lagoon. Uh, the water here it's a mix of uh, salt water and uh, fresh water that seeps uh, just at the base of the dunes here. Then you get the peninsula that goes into the sea and uh, that's what creates uh, the harbor. It used to be an active harbor in the in the 1700s uh, discovered by the the, the sailors back then, so they would use it to, to actually anchor their, their, their ships in this area, then they also do some trades. So it was active until the early 19, 1900s, uh, then the operation basically shifted uh, to the bigger harbour of Wavis Bay. Let me tell you something, whenever you go to Namibia, you can go for a jeep safari on the desert just like what I did. A 
and you are adventurous, just like me, you can also go for quad biking. And you know, one of the things that I know that I will definitely try in my next life is skydiving because for now, I'm not ready. So welcome to the Wabi Bay Lagoon. This is classified as a Ramsa site. By Ramsa site, uh, it's an international convention that was signed by over 170 countries that uh, agreed to protect their wetlands. And these wetlands are protected because of the, the biodiversity that they support. In this case, uh, the Wavis Bay Lagoon is mostly uh, critical, a critical uh, uh, biodiversity site because of the, the beds different uh, birds that uh, come to feed here we get birds from all over the world that fly in and make a stop over here so the whole idea with the Ramsar side the different nations agree because they want if a bird is flying from South America and make a stop over in Namibia it should be safe and it can stop in another African countries because it's whole Ramsar sites all over the world so this one, uh, the most famous bird that we get here at the Wavis Bay Lagoon is mostly the flamingo. We get two types of flamingos. We get the greater, what you call the greater flamingo, and the other one is the lesser flamingo. The greater flamingo is more of a carnival. It eats uh, the crustaceans. And to differentiate the two, between the two types, the greater flamingo is slightly bigger and it's big. It's light pink with a black tip on the, uh, at the end. While the lesser flamingo is smaller, more pink, more pink on the, on its feathers, and uh, it's big, it's dark, uh, dark pink. So right now, what we see here is the lesser flamingos, and uh, I'm hoping on the other side you're gonna, you're gonna see the the lesser flamingo. These are the greater flamingos. Actually. Would you ever believe if I tell you that this is my favorite place in the entire Namibia? I have been showing you guys the Africa that you don't see on TV, but after coming to Swakop and Wavis Bay, I believe that this really represents the Africa that you don't see on TV, to the extent that it shocked even me. I never believed that a place like this really exists on the continent Africa. I would say, kudos to all namibians because this place is super clean super organized i mean walking along the coastline seeing the ocean and also an estate made me feel like damn this is indeed heaven on earth My name is Maya, I'm from Ghana and uh, we are in the coast of Namibia for the first time mm -hmm. and I think this is the most beautiful place I've ever been in my entire journeys in, across Africa but since we're here we definitely want to know how this place was formed. I don't know even sometimes I was telling people is it a city or a town because when I got to Wavis Bay they said it's a town. I got to Swakop you check online they said it's a city so literally I'm so confused. So if you can educate us about Swakop and Wavis, I'll be so excited about that. Yeah. Uh, in brief, possibly what I can tell is that Wavis Bay and Swakop Mount, when it comes to, to the wedding of city, uh, both can only be classified as, uh, as, as towns. Uh, it's only window can be said it's a city because of being a capital city. 
I was very fortunate to, to work on those documents and I was very fortunate to, to be a chairperson of the, of the reform in terms of local government in Namibia. Uh, when you look back at uh, Sokob Moon and Wolfis Bay, both been, uh, happened to be colonized by, by South Africa and also in, by extension by German. Uh, because you must remember that uh, Sokomun possibly at that time South Africans wanted to make it as a port because of the area of Sokomun and looking at the area Sokomun could not be the port then they decided to to extend Wolfis Bay or to make Wolfis Bay as a port the name Wolfis Bay was uh, it, it came from the whales uh, the way, because Wolfis Bay was inhibited quite a number by the whales. Uh, then we, if you look into the history of Wolfis Bay, where you came to know, to see that the people from, no, from Norway in Europe, they have uh, the whaling station in the port. Uh, uh, whales were killed here. Uh, it was uh, harvested in Wolfis Bay, and then it was later exported to the European countries. If you, look, if you look quickly in the history of Office Bay, you will find that we have uh, uh, surnames like the Taylors, uh, people that came from Liberia, in terms, uh, especially from Monrovia in Liberia. Uh, we, have, uh, we have what we call, when we talk about uh, Quisabmund, uh, especially those people having those surnames, are being called the Monrovians, especially referring to the capital of Liberia. We've got a number of these people. In the later 19, uh, 1980s, some was there. And then we have people that were uh, stranded in Wolfis Bay uh, from uh, uh, Cape Verde. Cape Verde, they, were, uh, they came as stowaways. And they were also kept captive in uh, Bata South Africa at that time. Uh, Wolfis Bay was basically annexed through the annexation of, uh, of England. As been part of England, later on been transferred to South Africa as, uh, to administer as a, as, a, as a town because of the strategic location in terms of the port. Uh, in 1978, there was a UN resolution uh, uh, to, uh, for the free, to, as part of Wolfis Bay becoming a part of Namibia. It did not later on succeed that. With the independence of, uh, of Namibia to, of Namibia, Wolfis Bay was not transferred to Namibia at that time. Ooh. It remained as one of the, uh, the towns that were not transferred with the independence of Namibia. Wolfis Bay was later on as transferred on the night, on the night of the 28th March uh, 20, 28 February to be officially been part of Namibia on the 1st of March 1994. It means that the, the reintegration of Office Bay took place on the 1st of March 1994 is when we officially were uh, reintegrated as a part of Namibia. So which means that you guys became independent in 1994, not yeah. even part of the uh, independence of the entire country? No. We, we, all, yeah, we, we only became part of Namibia in 1994. So does it mean that moving from um, Wavis Bay to Swakmoon, that time you need a pass, you need a visa or something like that for you to get there? Yeah, because uh, if you enter the, the bridge from Swakmoon, there was a South African area where you have to get permission to enter Wavis Bay. It was very strict because um, uh, Wolfis Bay had a hand on Wolfis Bay. South Africa had a hand on Wolfis Bay. It was very f difficult for you to enter Wolfis Bay at a time. And uh, because Wolfis Bay was administered from Cape Town, it has been part of South Africa at that time. Because I remember that uh, for you to be in Wolfis Bay at that time, uh, uh, in my case, I had an, uh, a South African ID. Uh, my, my documentation was from South Africa. Uh, for somebody coming from Sokobun to Wolfis Bay, we're not regarded as South African because you have to have a pass. It's what we call, you, have, you need to have a pass, you must be registered. Uh, for, for, your, for your stay in Wolfis Bay was only very limited. Yeah. It's why you will find that quite a few people in Wolfis Bay, their settings were changed 
for you to stay here. And, uh, and the number of people who used to come and work here, especially they used to stay what you call a compound, working for the fishing industry, and then you have to, to go back after your time is, uh, is gone. You have to go back into the inlet. Let me understand. So right now, are you Namibian or South African? At this time, we are now Namibians. Uh, yeah, but you were born in South Africa. We were born. We were classified as being born in South Africa. <laughs> you, you must remember, it was very difficult. It was very classified because at uh, when South Africa had their uh, elections in 1994, yeah. some of us participated in the in their elections. We voted for the. The, the yes. INC as a government in South Africa, and we voted for the Western Cape in South Africa. No fui el primero, ni seré el último, pero sé que lo gozaré. Para serte sincero, un Dios el que te enseñó lo que puedes hacer con mi piel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the South, South Company. It's uh, comprising of two companies, uh, Wavis Bay Salt Holdings and the Wavis Bay Salt Refinery. Uh, they make uh, solar, seas, solar sea salt, they pump the water from the sea and they put it in the evaporation ponds or the production ponds. Uh, they are currently operating on a 6,500 hectares uh, piece of land and they are producing about a million tons of uh, salt per annum. Uh, most majority part of, of, their, pro of their output is uh, coarse salt, the one with uh, big grains. And there's a smaller, smaller uh, section where they make a table salt that is ready for, consume, for consumption. So the salt they produce is used for most it's industrial salt. Some, like in South Africa, they extract the chlorine. Uh, some they use it in the, in the food industry. Uh, uh, some is also used for de-icing the road, you know, in snowy countries. But uh, more than 80% of what comes out here uh, is exported. That's why they get these trucks that are always driving up to the port where they have uh, a storage and uh, they, they comes then uh, the, 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 the ships that uh, help uh, mm. ship it out of the country. Thank you so much for being part of this family but liking this video will mean a lot to me and if you are new to the channel do me a favor be part of this channel by subscribing to the YouTube channel and help us reach 900,000 subscribers by the end of August. I love you all and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Aya Maya. Peace out.